all right guys we're gonna be doing um the income statement but i will be focusing more on rent income and this is one thing that i feel like you guys need to make sure that you master the same with our insurance we need to only have rent income as that income that falls within the current financial year anything that falls outside the financial year must be subtracted from our rent income let us look at this example where we are told that rent income the pre-adjustment trial balance for the year ended 31st october 2020 they gave us rent income as 20,550. now that was before adjustment so basically that rent income is what we have received and remember in the income statement we don't put in income received we put in income that has been earned which is income that falls within the current financial year however here they told us that rent was received for 13 months so this rent amount of 20550 is incorrect because it needs to be rent for 12 months, 12 months ending the 31st of October 2020. So there's a problem there. You can see that there's a problem. And then they add something extra. They tell you that rent was increased by 10% on the 30th of April. So this is how it will look like. Our financial year starts on the 1st of November and then it ends on the 31st of October. This is 12 months, which is our financial year. But this rent was received for 13 months. It was increased. The rent was increased by 10% from April. Okay? So until October, it was 110%. That's what you need to understand. If rent was increased by 10%, it means it's no longer at 100%. It's now at 110%. So we need to calculate the increase so that we can be able to calculate rent that was received for the following month because the following month, which is the 1st of November 2020, that is outside our financial year. That is in the next financial year. So that rent amount must go out. Now, this is how we're going to start with it. We have six. Six represents our rent for six months. So we don't know how much our rent was, so we assume that obviously we don't assume we know that our rent was x we don't know what rent is so anything you don't know you must just remember that you put it as x so we received rent um x amount for six months that's where that six can, comes from and then after the six months what's happening it is no longer at x amount but it is at x amount multiplied by 110 because it was increased by 10 percent so it will be x amount multiplied by 110 for one two three four five six seven okay actually i'm wrong because it was increased at the end of april it means the increase will start from may so we have one two three four five six and then we've got seven over there. So it was 110% um, for seven months, okay? So when you add all these x's, obviously when you add all these x's here, that will give you six x, which is that six x. When you add all these 110% for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, it'll simply give you 110% um, x for seven months. When you add all these amount, they will give you the rent amount that we received for the entire year, which is 20,550. Here, guys, it's just simple math that you have to do. You're going to put 6x as it is, and then you're going to multiply 110 with 7. 110% with 7 will give you 7,7x, and that is equal to 20,550. 6x plus 7,7x will simply give you 13,7 is equal to 20,550. And then you will divide both sides by 13,7. And then you will get your monthly rent, which is your X. Note that this X amount of 1,500 is before the increase, meaning that from November we were getting 1,500 rand, 1,500 rand, 1,500 rand, and then we have 1,500 rand, 1,500 rand. But immediately after April, because it was increased on the 30th of April, it won't include April. Immediately after April, we were now receiving 1,500 
but it was multiplied by 110% because it was increased by 10%. And 1,500 multiplied by 110% will simply give you um, 1,650. It will give you 1,650. That 1,650 is what we used to receive after the 30th of April, but for seven months. The six months is fine. This six months is fine because it falls within the current financial year. The problem is the seventh month. This 1,650 that we received um, for, for November is incorrect. So this 1,600 is regarded as income received in advance. It's similar to prepaid expen expen expense, except that here we are the ones receiving rent. So we received rent for the next financial year, meaning that we owe the tenant that amount of money. We owe the tenant their money back, which is 1,615. If we don't give them uh, a place to stay, we need to repay them that 1,650 because they paid it in advance. We are receiving income, guys. Remember that we are the ones receiving income. So this 1,650, we received it in advance it is a liability to us i repeat income received in advance is a liability so what you need to do is to go to your income statement and when you get to your income statement what you need to do is to go to your rent which is 20,550 you minus the 1,650 now you have rental amount that you have earned which is 18,900 under trade and other payables our income received in advance will simply be that 1,650 50. Try this example. We'll do it shortly. Now let's check this example out because it's pretty much the same as the previous one. Here, however, they gave us a rental amount. This is what we have received, right? We don't know what the adjustments are going to say, but we know that we have received 23,500. And then they say to you, rent received was received for 11 months. Now that becomes a problem because rent is supposed to have been received. We only recognize rent that has been received or earned as rent received over 12 months or earned must be over 12 months. But this is, we only have received rent for 11 months and that is a problem. So there's one month rent missing, but that one month rent that is missing, it's part of income, it's part of what we have earned and we need to make sure that we actually add it to our rent income. But the problem is we don't know how much that one month rent was but they told us that rent was increased by 300 rent on the 1st of September. So this is the actual amount. Pay attention to when you are working with the actual values, absolute values and percentages. When you work with absolute values, it's different. You don't multiply, we are adding. So basically, this is our financial year. But note that income end must be over 12 months. And we only received rent for 11 months. So you need to make sure that your rent is the rent amount for 12 months and not for 11 months. Now the problem is the fact that we don't have the same amount every month. Something happened during the year. Right on the 1st of September, rent was increased. Mm -hmm. So at the 1st mm -hmm. of September, that will be the end of August, rent was increased by 300 rent. It was X from the 1st of March. But starting from September, it was no longer X. It was now X plus 300. Do you see, when we work with absolute values, it's totally different. We simply add to the amount that we are supposed to receive. But this was only received for September, October, November, and um, December, as well as January. But it was not received for fair. And we need to include the February rent in our rent income amount. So all we have to do now is to calculate how much that rent was. Actually, in this case, it doesn't fall with outside the financial year. We are missing one month rent. We are missing one month rent, which is rent for FAB. One month's rent is missing, which is rent for FAB. And all you have to do is to calculate your rent per month to figure out how much the February rent will be. Now, you will simply have to take the 6x add it with x plus 300 but that x plus 300 we only received it for september which is one two three four 
three, four, five. It was only received for five months. And this will be equal to the rental amount that we received for 11 months because 5 plus 6 will simply give you 11 months. And then all you have to do is just to apply grade 8 maths. For you to get that, you will simply have to take this, multiply by that, that multiply by that. So you'll have 6x plus 5x and then you add it with 1,500. 6x plus 5x will give you 11. So all of that amount must be equal to 23,500. Take 1,500 to the right hand side and on the left hand side you'll be left with 11x equals to 23,500 minus 1,500. So we're gonna minus 1,500 it will give you 22,000. Take 22,000 divided by 11. It will give you a rent per month. So your rent per month was 2,000 rent. It was 2,000 rent for March, April, May, June, July, August. But after August, it was now 2,000 rent plus 300. So it was 2,000 rent plus 300 for five months. However, we want rent for February. So rent for February will simply be the same amount, which is 2,000. 300. This 2,300 represents your accrued income and you need to add it to your income. So you're going to go to your income statement. In your income statement, you will simply take 23,500, add 2,300, which is your accrued income. It will give you your total rent amount for the year, which is 25,800. Your accrued income falls under trade and other receivables, and that will be your current asset. You will write it as accrued income under trade and other receivables, and the amount will be 2300